Welcome to this week's episode of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. Today's program is about autism and self-advocacy, and our guests are John Comages of the Ascend Job Club, Theo Walker of the uh, ASAN Advocacy Group, and Zach Miller, also the ASIN Advocacy Group. Uh, today, they're going to be telling us about what they have been involved with, as well as their own television program, uh, which they have been actively involved with. Before we begin, Will, tell us about your shirt. Oh, this week's shirt is is the is my Cal State one of my Cal State East Bay shirts. I got it when I went went to Cal State East Bay, and now I wear it every day. Interesting. Uh, also, I understand. Speaking of uh, going, I understand you have some announcements for us that might be relevant to our community. That's right, Keith. Next week, I'm I'm going on a trip to Israel with stu with adults for adults with autism. Uh, I'm going to be away in Israel for two weeks with other students with without autism. That'll be really good to hear about. Uh, I bet we may actually do a show on that later on. We'll have to see, but it sounds really exciting. Will, would you take it from there? Gladly. What is your web TV talk show about? I'm John Comages. I'm the co-facilitator of the SN Job Club. All three of us are from Sacramento. Uh, we also belong to the ASAN, to, in addition to the ASAN Job Club, we also belong to the Sacramento Asperger Syndrome Information and uh, uh, Support Network, and we belong to the Asperger Syndrome Self-Advocacy Network, ASON. Zach here founded the ASON, network, the ASON chapter in Sacramento and he successfully used his self-advocacy skills to gain his release from Porterville State Hospital, now Porterville Developmental Center. Theodore and Zach are both disability advocates for the Peer Advocacy Connection in Sacramento. Theodore is a co-leader of the ACT Now Self-Advocacy Workshop in Sacramento City College. Zach was keynote speaker for the Supported Life Institute two years ago at a statewide conference because of his self-advocacy skills. Um, I am the co-facilitator of this and we are now running on a weekly basis um, job uh, meetings online. So I do that for on Monday for Ascend and I do it on Tuesdays for uh, for for the Sacramento group and I've got 30 years experience because I'm a certified voc rehab counselor. These gentlemen have lived it and are doing it and there's really sh the show is about them. Excellent. Will, would you take it from there? Gladly. What is your web TV talk show about? Our web TV talk show about is, is about teaching um, disabled people on the autism spectrum how to self-advocate, how to stand up for themselves, and how to go out into the community and learn how to solve problems. How did you come up with the title? I came up with the title because um, I saw that um, the neurotypical people out there needed to know what's going on with the people on the spectrum, what's, what's out there. A lot of people are not aware of what's going on as far as the self-advocacy stuff and things that we found out. Um, it's it's good information for people. What is what is self advocacy? Uh, self advocacy um, is a process of where a person learns to stand up for themselves. Um, but it's more so about a person um, taking a call upon themselves and relying upon others when they need help to access services. Um, a person is entitled to be in control of their own life and their own direction. So it's about having the right to make life decisions without undue control by others. What is Peer Advocacy Connection? It's to promote the three um, self-advocacy chapter events that we have. We have regional meetings um, every quarter to train people with disabilities and people on the spectrum 
about the resources and they get speakers and trainers and stuff. And it's to showcase the, um, the, um, what the chapters are doing in the 10 counties that we have, the Sacramento region, the Yolo County region, and the Sacramento area and stuff. And it provides people with disabilities in the spectrum to advocate for themselves, to stand up for their rights. Why do you feel compelled to make an instrument instructional DVD for consumers to ac access services through the Department of Rehabilitation? Excellent question. People who are disabled don't know how to self-advocate. The Department of Rehab tells the consumer how to seek services, but seeking services and self-advocating for yourself are two different actions. And what Zach and I want to do is to be able to create an instructional DVD that sequentially tells people who are disabled how to self-advocate because self-advocating is very important when you're trying to seek services from Department of Rehab. So we want to make sure that there's some type of media resource that people can turn to to learn those skills as well. Okay. Theo, can you tell us how you originally got involved in self-advocacy? Well, it goes back um, to the days of attending college. Um, it started out, um, I started out at Sacramento City College in the late 70s, early 80s. And um, actually, when I began school, I really did not know I was self-advocating for myself. But what ended up happening was that um, I had a learning disability that I did not know about. And a counselor, a counselor had me tested. And from that point, um, I was going around to various professors, asking them for help, for extra time, for homework, um, class assignments, exams, things of that nature. And I was granted, I was granted um, those, those opportunities to do that. Um, when I transferred from Sacramento City College to Metropolitan State College, um, I was doing more self-advocacy. Mm -hmm. I was going to the student, student um, social, the student um, support student support center for where students go to get uh, assistance for for classes. Um, I was granted uh, note takers and mm -hmm. uh, tutors for all of my classes and extra time for taking tests. So um, I learned to do this by um, seeking out professors who had um, empathy for uh, people who have disabilities, which enabled me to finish my education. Excellent story mm -hmm. and, and a, a very compelling uh, vision for our community. Theo, you had mentioned earlier on that you had, as a child, uh, been diagnosed with learning uh, disabilities. Um, when were you diagnosed as being on the spectrum? I was diagnosed as being on the spectrum in 1995. Um, as, I w as I was saying, um, the psychologist that I saw as a child when I was about seven years old said that I had developmental issues and my parents did not know about the regional center services at that time. So um, I, went, I, I, went, I went through school struggling, struggling, and it was an uphill battle. Um, the type of disability that I have is nonverbal learning disorder. Mm -hmm. and. Um, um, it's also suspected that I have um, Asperger's as well because there is a strong possibility of that, that, that my um, neuropsych evaluation reflects that. So, um, you know, I, I, I think I have both, I have both a dual, dual, dual diagnosis of both. And um, what, they've, what they've done, they've classified me as, as high functioning because I was able um, to go on to college when when other when other mm -hmm. uh, educators and um, physicians didn't think that I had the cognitive capacity to do so, but um, I proved them wrong because uh, my parents um, encouraged me to do that, and um, and I thank God for my parents for encouraging me to excel and to achieve my academic dreams. Um, I graduated from Metropolitan State College on May 16th, 1993, and um, that was the, the, joyous, the joyous time I could, 
I could ever reminisce about because my parents came from California to Colorado to watch that event happen. Really good to hear. Yes. When you were a diagnosis, uh, excuse me, when you were diagnosed as being on the spectrum, mm -hmm. um, how did that affect your life? Well, it, it impacted my life. Um, it, it impacted my life um, from the very beginning. Um, the one thing that I'd like to communicate to the audience is that when I was growing up in the 60s and 70s, um, people did not know about Asperger's. They did not know about nonverbal learning disorder. Um, they did not know about dyspraxia. Um, all of these other types of um, developmental disorders. And so therefore, when people don't, did not know about the type of condition that I, that I w eventually was diagnosed with, um, it, helped, it helped me to put, put me on the right track mm -hmm. in terms of moving forward with my life because it was a stumbling block. A, con a, a continual stumbling block. Even though I was um, diagnosed with learning disabilities, um, this was like in 1981, mm -hmm. 82. Um, you know, I had been diagnosed by a variety of, of psychologists, physicians, and uh, it wasn't until uh, I came back to California that my mother was able to find the proper uh, physicians to diagnose me. Tell us about the type of work that you're doing. The moment right now, I'm doing self advocacy work for um, the Act Now, the Act Now Self Advocacy Workshop at Sacramento City College, and what I am doing there um, is preparing pr um, uh, PowerPoint presentations that I will be presenting for a learn for a learning disabilities class and teaching them about self advocacy. Um, um, the president of ASON Sacramento, Stacy Shaw, had asked me in the spring to be a part of this project because she was very impressed with my background in communication. In, in communication, and that is that is going to be one of the topics that will be covered in the workshop. It's going to be an eight-week uh, workshop um, that we will be doing for this particular class. Um, the first class is, is, is for the first eight weeks, and then there's a possibility that we will be doing another um, set of uh, workshops for the, the next uh, eight weeks in the spring. Excellent. I'm going to take a little side topic here. How can our uh, viewers, uh, both in the Bay Area and around the world through the Internet, um, set up self-advocacy networks and, and perform self-advocacy workshops where they may be? Well, one of the ways that they can do that um, is to go on the internet and find uh, self-advocacy organizations um, such as ASON, mm -hmm. um, such as uh, People First, um, to learn about self-advocacy. Um, there are a series of, of web shows that are on the net that address this topic for them to learn, to learn about these skills. Excellent. Is there information available uh, about that on the ASEN website? Um, we have not put that information on the on the ASEN website uh, just yet. Um, I imagine it might be. Um, the workshop is separate from the um, from the um, the organization, so it really falls under the umbrella of Sacramento City College mm -hmm. because um, they're, that's the institution that is supporting the project, not so much um, the national yes. ASON, ASON um, organization. Zach, tell us about your background for self-advocacy. How, how did you get the program started? Well, as John says, you know, I, I founded um, ASON Sacramento about five years ago, and um, and ASON Sacramento is a um, nonprofit under the umbrella of um, um, the main um, organization, which is national in Washington D.C. It's run by Ari Neiman, and it's, and, it's, and it's for people on the spectrum. The advocacy and stuff, they do advocacy work and stuff, and 
and they meet monthly meetings um, every first Monday. And I'm on different boards and committees that I'm involved in, like the um, Alta CEC is one of them, which is um, the CEC that makes recommendations to the board of directors of Alta, which is Alta is the 21, um, has 21 reading centers, a nonprofit that provides direct supports to people with disabilities across the board. And um, I'm on um, the PAC, I'm the representative of PAC, and I represent People First, um, too, which is an organization run by for people with disabilities. So, um, and I also have my own business called Star Advocacy. And um, my focus with Star Advocacy is to train people on self-advocacy skills and um, utilize the skills to advocate for themselves. And I provide hands-on training um, and show examples how to advocate for yourselves and um, be a productive member of the society. And I go, and John said that um, a couple years ago, I was the keynote speaker at the Statewide Solidarity Conference in Sacramento, Support Life Institute. And I, my focus was disability, um, disability rights. I, I gave a speech on that. I understood that you are uh, an officer and you were co-founder of the organization, Zach? Yes, I, um, I was co-founder of the organization called uh, San Sacramento, and I, was, I used to be the, uh, the officer, one the vice presidents of the organization, the chapter. Interesting. One thing I know many of our uh, viewers are very interested in finding out about is how did you get your way out of Porterville? Yeah, Porterville Middle Center, I went in there at about 25 and got out about 33. I had eight years, and um, I spent in there. I just advocated for myself by um, by talking to people and doing my program, doing what I'm supposed to, going to classes I'm supposed to take and everything I'm supposed to do. And I spoke up and said I want out of here. And so um, it took a lot of pushing and stuff like that. And it took a couple of years after that, even from the time I said something to, um, to even get out of there a couple, uh, two years more um, later because um, a lot of the um, um, placements were um, were turned down and a lot of um, it was a lot of it was a really hard time to find me a place and stuff so by the time I got out it was I was really relieved when I finally got out of that place that is a very empowering story how did you keep going when they kept saying no you said it took a couple of years after you had started before you were able to be released. What did you do? How did you motivate yourself to keep continuing? Well, it was really hard to um, motivate myself and I had been there already for a long time already. And um, I just kept on saying to myself, yeah, I'll get out of here soon. And there's a life for me out there that I have to live and stuff in the community. And eventually I got out, it was, it was freedom really encouraging to hear because many of the people who are watching this program may not be institutionalized but they are likely to be in situations that is not within their current control and that they need to do something similar to themselves would like to know how. How did you learn how to self-advocate? Well, I learned to self-advocate by being in part of People First. People First helped me when I from, from the first time when I turned 18, when I joined People First and Yellow People First and um, and I got into got into it and started doing the self-advocacy stuff. I That's how I learned my skills and how to stand up for myself. They taught me how to do it. Very, very powerful. Any advice for our viewers there? Again, if they want to learn self-advocacy skills, uh, um, I know Theo had mentioned some resources, but do you have any suggestions beyond that where our viewers could learn how to become self-advocates? Just believe in yourself, and then anything can happen, any, any possibilities. Um, it takes a lot to stand up for yourself. You just got to believe in yourself and know you can do it and stand up for your rights. Excellent. Thank you very much. 
You three are our first guests from the Sacramento community, and I'm very pleased to hear that you have a strong and vibrant community there. Would you like to add any uh, additional things about what you're doing there in the Sacramento community? I would. Uh, we have a very strong uh, we have a very strong community. We work together, and we do this at, at ASON, and we do it at the uh, at the Sacramento Job Club, and we've all joined the, the San Francisco Job Club. One of the things we do is we meet weekly online. The uh, San Francisco Club is doing this. Uh, we've got the same. We've got a wonderful model here. We're using it. And uh, the point is that we have a self-help therapeutic community where everybody works together to find jobs because it's a job club. And it works because of people like Theodore, like Zach, uh, like me, like all of us. That's how it works because we all work together. Excellent. And, and since the uh, at least one component of the job club is online, is there any way that our out-of-the-area viewers, maybe in Sacramento or maybe beyond, might be able to uh, participate in the online job club? Is it possible to post a link um, and have people from outside the area join us on Zoom? It sounds like that to me, and we'll I certainly find out about I that. I think then. that can be arranged. Excellent. I just want to say, gentlemen, this has been a particularly uh, good segment that we've had. You have been very inspiring uh, and empowering to both our viewers and myself. And I want to thank you very much for being here. And I know that we will be hearing from you again very soon. Thanks again. Well, thank you for having us. No, thank you thank very you. much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Okay. Our next segment will be covered by our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Stacy, could you tell us about the upcoming cultural events and coming up in our community? Yes, I will. Today we have an event, a holiday party for Ascend, uh, taking place at the Ark of San Francisco starting at 1 today, and music will be provided by DJ Sound from KCSF. Um, and a brief um, thing I want to mention that will happen tomorrow is um, there's going to be an event um, uh, based on the neogram it's a holiday gathering with um casey Berghoff and uh melanie bell who are the specialist of certified specialists of the neogram which is um you know personality styles or um made of nine personality types but they break it down into three melanie and casey in any case that will happen uh tomorrow at 12 p.m to 3 p.m and the um those who RSVP'd, um, they will email those 24 hours, um, the location itself. For some reason, they're just going to give the address in 24 hours within because they prefer that way. But in any case, that's going to happen tomorrow. So um, I think that's pretty much it for events that are happening. And this is Stacey Kennedy. Thank you. Well, folks, this is our show for this week. I'm Keith Halperin. Uh, and I'm Will Burnick. And I'm John Comages. And I'm, I'm Zach Miller. And I'm Theodore Walker. Stacey Kennedy. And we are Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. Until we see you again, a happy holiday season to you and yours. Happy holidays. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. Happy holidays.